Hello everybody, welcome back to Hunt Creative, where we're going to be making some clip-on modular fireplaces to go with our magnetic modular inn and tavern tiles. As you can see here, I've pre-prepped some dollar store foam core with easy peel paper. And for each fireplace that we're going to make, we're going to need two two inch by two inch rectangles, two one and a half inch by two inch rectangles, a three quarter inch by two inch rectangle, a half inch by two inch rectangle, and two half inch by half inch squares. Once we get all of these pieces cut out carefully so that we don't cut ourselves because those utility knives are sharp, we're going to peel all the paper off of these shapes. We peel the paper off because it'll hold the glue a little bit better and because we're gonna texture some of these to resemble stone and brickwork. I'm going to be making three of these for you today. And I've got all these pieces pre-cut for you. Take a couple of minutes, throw on some tunes, watch a movie, listen to podcasts. Binge watch Hunt Creative streams while you're making these things. Whatever turns your crank. And hey, if you like these videos, feel free to click on the subscribe button and the like button. I know that uh, not everybody likes to do that, but it sure helps the algorithm and it helps us grow the channel. Zen and the art of peeling paper. Probably help if I could grow fingernails. Almost ready here, another couple of pieces, and we'll be ready to move on to the next step. Here we go. So we're gonna use a rollerball pen and just kind of draw in the rough shapes of some stones and some bricks on these panels. We only need to do the faces that are pointing into the room and on the back side that will be seen from across the table. Surfaces that are going to be glued together don't get textured. Here I'm just doing some rough river stone texturing. Round and oval shapes with rounded corners. different sizes. If you have any pointed corners or whatnot, just take a moment to round those corners off with your pen and fill in the, uh, the mortar line with ink. And I'm not even gonna try and make them the same. I'm just gonna texture them free form. And in the end, they're gonna look great. idea here is this is uh, rough stacked river stone with mortar filling in the gaps in between kind of basic construction It 
a few minutes, but it looks great in the end. Now I'm going to do the surfaces of the mantle and the hearth piece. uniformity. Taking the time to texture your uh, foam core at this stage makes a big difference at the end. pieces are all textured. And then for this one, I'm just going to freehand in some brick-like patterns. Kind of rough baked bricks. Not terribly well manufactured or not terribly exacting. Yeah, and across the table it's going to look great. And a few smaller bricks here and there. For some variety. In this case I'm going to line up the horizontal mortar lines a little bit so that they look like they're intentional, but I'm not going to worry about mirroring the brick pattern on both surfaces because really it's not that exact a science. Oh, maybe I did decide that. Look at that. And then I'm freehanding the rest. mantelpiece and the hearth piece. Just kind of freehanding and eyeballing it. I'm not even too worried if the uh, border lines are precision straight or anything. There we go. And this last one I'm just going to use paint to give the image of stone slabs. So I'm going to put this smaller rectangle in between the two squares and that's going to form the clip. Here I guess I needed another piece of hot glue to make it work properly. There we go. And I'm just giving it a little rub and a wiggle to make sure that the uh, hot glue isn't clumping up and creating an extra spacing. Use a swirl instead of a ring so that there's room for the air to escape. And I'm using my cutting mat to line up the edges to make sure they're nice and aligned. I'm going to glue the three quarter inch rectangle on the bottom to be the hearth piece. It sticks out a little farther might glue to my cutting mat a little bit, but that's okay. Just lining it up and making sure everything sits properly. And I'll use the little square pieces to form the box of the fireplace itself. This part is where the flames will burn. Extra side out, of course. A little bit of hot glue stringing there, but I can live with that. And now I'm going to put on the mantelpiece above the firebox. Extra side out, of course. Get it nicely lined up. strings to deal with and now I'm just going to continue those mortar lines onto the surfaces that are now visible. I'll make another one. So we're going to glue, glue the one and a half inch by two inch clip inside and use my cutting mat to line it up properly. And little swirls instead of rings to allow the air to escape. 
little bit of pressure, make sure it all lines up properly. hearth piece on at the bottom, that's the three quarter inch wide piece. And we'll glue on the little squares to create the opening for the firebox. Texture side out. Little dab of glue. piece on top of the firebox. Line up nicely. And I'm just going to continue those mortar lines again. Just for that visual continuity. It's worth it in the end. It'll make it look great once it's all painted up. minutes to do the extra details it really makes a difference in the end when it gets all painted. And this is just a plain stone slab one and I'm going to sponge paint it to look like slabs of granite. A little higher end fireplace for a merchant noble's house or something. Again, we're making swirls, not rings with the hot glue, and that allows the air to escape from inside of the swirl. I'm just wiggling it around to compress the glue a little bit and lining it up with my cutting mat so it's nice and square. Slicing off a tiny little extra bit there. And we'll glue on the hearth. two squares on to form the sides of the firebox. And one more piece and we'll be ready for the next step. Adding the mantle. off the, uh, the glue strings and there we have it. Slab, brick, and stone. And now I'm going to black bomb them with some matte acrylic paint from the dollar store. I'm looking for almost total coverage here and I'm just using that extra piece of uh, black foam core inside the clip to help me hold these in place. I'm liberal with the paint. I've got a fairly big jar, so I don't mind using it a bit. Make sure we get the inside of the firebox. And flip it over and make sure we get the backside. Slide it off my extra foam core with my brush and work on the next one. Listen to some righteous tunes, put on a movie, Zen and the Art of Craft Painting. Okay, 
see that texture coming through a little bit there. Slide it off and move on to the last one. covered. My camera's trying to keep up with the uh, angle and focus with my hands moving. Good. Almost ready for the next step. Once the black paint has dried completely, I'm going to come back and I did a dry brush with kind of a darker gray color here. And now I'm going to go over that dark gray color with a tan dry brush. Pardon my focus. Camera's trying to play keep up. See how that texture is really pulling out and coming together. Both sides. And the top. Brick textured fireplace as well. Now I'm not going all the way back into the firebox because it should all be covered with soot and blackened anyway. Just the front half of that uh, hearth piece. And of course all of the out outside surfaces. Here I'm using a sea sponge and I'm dabbing on the tan paint onto the untextured fireplace to resemble granite slabs. So this is the fine aggregate inside the granite. Sea sponges are great. I picked up a pack at the dollar store for cheap. Love these guys. We'll do the back surface. Really good. And I touched a couple of bricks with some brownish colors just to pull out a bit of contrast in those. And now I'm hitting it with homemade black wash. Lots of water, a little bit of black paint, a little bit of old paint water from a, a leftover jar. Um, Black Magic Craft has a really good recipe for this. Jeremy knows what he's talking about. Go check him out. And this just adds to the gritty color depth. I'm going to do them all. And the brick one. The back side. All the exposed surfaces, really. This kind of unifies the color scheme and brings it all together as a, a nicely unified single piece. And we're ready for the next step. I have these little acrylic game crystals that are orangey colored and I'm going to drop them into the firebox to uh, resemble the flames of the fire going on in there. From a distance they look really good. 
just a little dab of glue. You don't want to cover up those crystals, but you do want the thing to stay in there. You could build a fire out of pulled cotton or uh, hot glue or other stuff as well and paint it up if you like, but I had these on hand and I thought I'd give them a shot. In the future, I think I'm going to try making one with an orange LED in there so it looks like the fire is actually glowing. Let me get my hands on some flicker LEDs. to work on the engineering of getting the LED and battery in place without affecting the clip-on. You can see they look pretty good. Almost ready for the final step. Looks like I decided to touch it up with a little bit of blackened soot coming out of the firebox here. Just that little detail to add a touch of realism to the fireplace itself. And a little soot staining around the orange crystals on the hearth piece. Nothing too crazy. One more to go. Okay, good. I'm going to coat the entire thing with matte finish Mod Podge to protect it on the table. You don't want to get it on the crystals themselves because they're pretty durable and if you put matte colored finish on them they won't shine and sparkle. But all of the outside stonework definitely hit it with the Mod Podge. We'll stiffen up your foam core and protect it against dings and nicks when you're chucking them in a drawer or a box for storage. And then just brushing some excess off of those crystals. Got a little sloppy there. Try and be a little more careful with this one. Good. One more to go. In the back side, you can see the off colored bricks that I created to add a little depth of color for this one. And 
here we see them in play against our tavern tiles. So here we see our magnetic modular tavern tiles, tavern tables, tavern chairs, clip-on tavern windows, some minis for scale, and our three different clip-on fireplaces. Come back next Thursday when we're going to upload another video and the interior of our Cook It Carpenter Inn is very close to completion. I look forward to seeing you next Thursday. We'll catch you next time.